a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said, Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, you hypocrites! You pay tithes of mint and dill and cumin, and have neglected the weightier things of the law, judgment, and mercy, and fidelity. But these you should have done without neglecting the others. Blind guides who strain out the gnat and swallow the camel. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, you hypocrites! You cleanse the outside of cup and dish, but inside they are full of plunder and self-indulgence. Blind Pharisee, cleanse first the inside of the cup, so that the outside also may be clean. The Gospel of the Lord. I just want to point out a couple of things today. First of all, uh, we've been reading through the letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Uh, so in some years we hear from 1 Thessalonians. Right now this year we're hearing from 2 Thessalonians. Uh, one of the things that makes the letter of the Thessalonians different from the other letters of St. Paul is this is where he most specifically talks about um, apocalyptic things and apocalyptic, apocalyptic times. Right. So in the New Testament... If you want to learn about the end times and the coming of Christ, right, you can look at different places in the Gospels, right? You can look at the speech that Jesus gave on the Mount of Olives, right? You can look at the book of Revelation, and you can look at these letters of the Thessalonians. The reason why St. Paul, at least according to scholars, the reason why they think he talks so much about the end times in these letters is because St. Paul, when he went to different communities to evangelize, right, he had certain topics he was going to cover, and presumably, one of the last things you would talk about are the last things, right? The apocalyptic things. And we know from the Acts of the Apostles that when St. Paul was traveling to uh, Thessalonica, he ended up having to have his mission cut short because the people began to be enraged against him. And so he and his fellow missionaries had to flee. So presumably, after they left, they wrote letters back to them, right, finishing their teaching. So if you're ever interested in what St. Paul has to say about the end times, you can look to the first and second Thessalonians. Uh, interestingly enough, it's from Thessalonians where we actually get the false doctrine, right, of the rapture. It comes from first Thessalonians. Contrary to what many people think, that is nowhere mentioned in the book of Revelation. It is only mentioned in Thessalonians, and it's only mentioned if you're reading it in Latin, right? So uh, just goes to show you that sometimes... Uh, doctrines that seem really prevalent, especially in the Protestant or evangelical world, right? They aren't always as founded in the Bible as you might think. And the rapture is just one of those examples. Let's point that out to you. Uh, and don't expect me to give a treatise on these letters either. Uh, these letters are notoriously difficult and difficult to interpret and understand. And part of the reason for that is because, obviously, this all hasn't happened yet. So just like the Old Testament prophecies, right, just as they were prophecies about Jesus and yet kind of confusing, right? Same way with these visions of St. Paul about the end times. There's not really a clear and coherent uh, interpretation of them. Right? But if you're interested, you can go and look through some of those things. I just want to say something else that's very simple about this feast day today. Right? Today is the feast of St. Rose of Lima. St. Rose of Lima in our modern age, is perhaps more contradictory to modernity than most other saints in church history. St. Rose of Lima, the primary thing she did to become a saint was she had a life of intense penance and intense mortification. Right? When you think about all of the bad images in your mind of Catholicism and our idea of Catholic guilt and discipline and penance, right? none did this more than St. Rose of Lima. She scourged herself. She did intense fasting and penances. She wore a crown of thorns, right? Of so many of the saints of church history, she is one that might stand out where you would say, man, I don't really know if that's an example we should be holding up. It seems a little bit extreme. And the only reason I bring this up is because I think it is important for us to talk about this because it teaches us something about the life of sanctity. Firstly, it teaches us that when we think about the lives of the saints, we have to remember 
that the saints don't have a secular materialistic view of the world like many of us have, even though we don't realize it, right? We're breathing in the waves and currents of our modern age, and so it's easy to be affected by this. I think there should be no doubt that St. Rose of Lima, with her penances and mortifications, she brought about countless spiritual good for her people. That's one of the reasons why she is considered the patron saint of her nation, of Peru. Right? And we will never know, with our worldly perspective, just how many conversions were brought about because of her intense penance and mortification. It is true in the church that there are some people, the way they live out holiness is through penance and mortification. Right, we actually have a group of sisters up in Kokomo uh, here in Indiana. If you ever want to go and visit them, they have mass every day that you can attend. Right, they would be another example to the, of this. To many people in the world, it seems completely contradictory. Right, they don't wear shoes. They hardly get any sleep at night. They don't eat meat. They do all sorts of very extreme penances. And yet we will never know the kind of spiritual fruit that is bearing in our diocese. More importantly, I think, for this Feast of St. Rose of Lima, I think that is something important for us to see, is that when it comes to the life of sanctity, when it comes to people desiring to be saints, it is important for us to remember that every person has their own unique way of living that out. And oftentimes it will be seen as extreme or intense. But what matters and what is significant is that each of those saints recognize that in this way, this is their way of living out holiness. And every saint has a different example of that. Right? Fulton Sheen, one of the ways he lived out holiness right, was hosting a TV show. St. Rose of Lima, her way of holiness was through penance and mortification. St. Gianna Mola, the doctor, right, her way of living out holiness was sacrificing her life for the sake of her newborn child. In every life of the saints, there's always these unique aspects. And the same is true in our lives. In order to become a saint, in order to be truly holy, there's not one specific way. What truly matters is that we have an intense and deep love of Christ, and we seek His guidance. And we live out in often ways that seem intense or extreme. But it doesn't matter because that is our way. And we see this in the lives of all of the saints. So we need to be careful to just dismiss St. Rose of Lima as just overly extreme and intense. She is a saint, and the church holds her up in that regard.